What is up Bull Nation and welcome to today's video. Today I am compiling the best ultimate guide for you guys when you're trying to progress through Elden Ring. One of the most difficult things about Elden Ring is not knowing where to go and number two is going where you think you should go and missing out on getting some side quests and then having to go to NG Plus and get that side quest and then doing another NG plus and doing another side quest because you miss them all the time. This guide is meant for you to complete the game 100% with all the quest lines without altering any quest line, missing out any quest line, just a full on 100% completion without you guys missing out on anything. So if that sounds like something you're interested, a like would be greatly appreciated and let's dive in. Alright, so guys, so I've been working on this guide for quite a long time, but actually I also want to give a shout out to Ethics, which is a person that posted something very similar on Reddit, and he kind of gave me a better idea of how I could actually display the, the locations you need to go to in a more visible manner, so big kudos to him, but we've been working on this guide for a while as well. So here is what we're going to need to go, and I want you to go and pay attention to this map because we are going to be using this particular map because the game is going to be divided in different sections. Now, one thing I want to mention is that there are going to be three lines appearing on the screen. One's going to be a red line, which is going to be priority number one. So you'll need to complete that red line first. Then there's going to be a blue line, which is going to be the second one that you need to complete after you finish the red line within this area. And then there's going to be a green line, which is going to be the third one you need to complete after you complete the red, the blue, and then it's green. All right, so with that being said, let's talk about how everything's gonna happen. So you're gonna start off here, guys, at the first step after you guys finish your tutorial. Once you guys finish this tutorial, your map is not gonna look like this. It's actually gonna look great out, but just take this video for reference so you know exactly where to go. So after you complete and you get to the first step and you complete the tutorial, you're gonna be right here. You're gonna make your way to this area here called the Church of El. Now, this particular church is going to have a couple characters in there, and I'm trying to go ahead and keep this as spoiler-free. I'm not even going to mention the NPCs, because if you're new to the game, I'm pretty sure you don't want to get spoiled. But I'm going to let you guys know where there's NPCs that you're going to need to talk to. So in this area, there's going to be two NPCs that you're going to be able to talk to. So do keep in mind when you head to this church to look out for two NPCs. Moving after you guys are done with the Church of El, you're going to work your way over here which is the gate front. Now the gate front is a very interesting area because this is where you're going to meet another NPC, one of the main NPCs, which is going to give you a, you know, it's going to give you your horse and it's going to pretty much get you started on the quest. After you get done with the gate front, you're going to make your way to this location right here, the Lake North. Now this particular location is extremely important because you are going to be running into a couple of NPCs as you work your way there which are just primarily enemies, nothing that you have to start a dialogue with, but you do want to get that grace point. After you're done with that grace point, you're going to head to this location right here, which I'm going to mark as well. In this location, there is going to be a NPC that is invisible, and you just got to do a little barrel roll, and that's going to turn them uninvisible, so you guys know exactly where to go. Now, I'm going to lay out the route in, in colors in a little bit, but I just want to show you guys really quick where you're going to go. After you're done talking to him, you're going to head to this location right here called the Stained Bridge. And that pretty much covers the main plot, which is the red line, after you're done talking to that guy. So pretty simple, serial self-explanatory. So once that is completed, guys, we are then going to start the blue line. Now, to start the blue line, guys, we're going to then have to head back to this location right here, the first step. And from the first step, we're going to work our way to the Coastal Cave. Once we're done with the Coastal Cave, we are then going to go back to the first step and we're going to actually fast travel to this location right here and start the quest once again within the blue line. So you're going to go with the blue line and work your way over here to this location right here. And then in this area right here, there's going to be an NPC that you're going to need to talk to and you're going to want to make sure you progress this quest line. After you're done with that, guys, you're going to head to this location called the Artist Shack. Once you're in the Artist Shack, you're going to go ahead and talk to get this done. And then you're going to progress to this area right here where you will get to meet another NPC to complete this particular quest line. And you guys should be good to go. It will be right here. All right, so now I'm moving on to this side of the map. Now, on this side of the map, guys, you're going to want to make sure you start on this area right here. You're going to meet an NPC within this area, in this location. Once you meet the NPC within this area, you are then going to move to this particular area right here and go to the Third Church of America. Now, once you go to the Third Church of America, you're then going to go ahead and follow this road, and you're going to come back to the Mistwood Outskirts. Once you get down on the Mistwood Outskirts, you're going to head over to this location, which is going to be the Mistwood Ruins, 
and then you're going to head over to the 4th Haith West. And that is pretty much completing that entire map. And as you go along this path, guys, you are going to bump into NPCs, and that should complete almost all the quest lines and all the right pattern of the quest lines within this location. So now let me show you guys the map, overlay it for you guys, so you guys can see it in full detail, so now you understand where we went with the red lines, the blue lines, and the green lines. Alright, so now that you guys are done with that portion of the map, now it's time to look at the bottom portion of the map. Once again, guys, we're going to start off right here, which is going to be the first step. Within the first step, guys, we are then going to go work our way this way, and we are going to go and get the side of grace just to unlock it, and then we're going to go to the Forlong Hound Evergoal. Once we go here, guys, we're going to activate this, and then we're going to go back this way, and then go to the Bridge of Sacrifice, and we are going to pick up that grace point. And after we pick up that grace point, we're going to go to this location right here. And this location is going to allow us to come back and forth within the blue line. This is keeping us within the red line. After we're done here, guys, we're going to just keep going forward, pick up this side of grace, keep going forward. And then we're going to go to the Castle Warren Lift. We're then going to pick up this side of grace and continue even further and make it all the way to this location right here to complete the quest. And that will complete the entire red line. Now, to start off the blue line, we're going to fast travel to this grace point right here. We're going to fast travel right here to this grace point and then come back up this way. And then we're going to start from this part and work our way back to this part to complete the quest line. There is going to be a couple of NPCs we're going to bump our into the road as we work our way through here. So there's going to be one here. Okay. And that NPC is going to actually lead us over here. And it's going to bring us back and forth. So that's why we have the red and the blue line. So now you guys kind of understand exactly what's going on. And that pretty much completes the bottom portion of the map. Talking to the NPC right here and completing this particular quest line. So you guys should get to know. Now I'm going to overlay the map so you guys can see it in visual and understand exactly what we're doing. But remember, you will be talking to NPCs as you work your way through here. All right, so now that you completed the bottom portion of the map, you are now then going to go back to the Stormhill Shack. This is where you're going to spawn in, and this is going to start your third adventure. Okay, so from here, guys, you're going to go around this little loopy thing, and you're going to work your way across here, picking up the side of grace. But you want to make sure you get to this one which is the market, the Fell Omen. That's going to be the main marker point you want to head to. Once you get to this main marker point, you're going to go into this big castle area. Now, this is a huge, huge area, a lot of exploration here, and you're going to be able to pick up all these side of grace because this is a very big portion of the map. But the end goal here is once you finish this, you're going to go to the, you're going to end up at this location right here, and then this one, which is going to be the Godric of Grafted. This is where you're going to find your first boss battle, and complete that boss battle, and that should take you all the way right here to the lake facing cliff. That's pretty much all you have to do for this portion of the map, because you already completed everything on this side of the map, so then it's just a matter of progressing after here. And then I'm going to go ahead and overlay the picture. Here the good thing is that you only have to follow one red line, so it's pretty easy and self-explanatory. Alright guys, so now that you've made it out of there, guys, now you're going to go talk to the NPC that's going to be right here by the Stillwater Cave. After you guys are again talking to him, you're going to progress your way through this part right here. And you're going to meet another NPC to continue the quest line here. Go this way. You're going to meet another NPC. Then from there, you're going to head here. And then you're going to make, after you talk to this guy, you're going to come back here again and finish that part. Once you're done with that part, you're going to progress your way all the way over here. Talk to this part. You're going to head it over here. Talk here. And then you're going to end up right here. And that's going to complete the red line. So that's the main path you want to take before you start the blue one. Now, once you're done with the red one, you're then going to start the blue one right here and go travel to this grace point right here and then start it right there. And then you're going to go ahead and make your way across here and you're going to head to this location right here, the northern of your lake shore. And then from there, you're going to take this road up, 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 up here until you progress to this area. And here you're going to be fighting a boss, a little boss fight. Complete that boss fight and that should lead you all the right here to the Randy's chamber where you will complete the blue line. So once again... Do the red line first and then do the uh, blue line of that particular quest line so you can complete that there. Now I'm going to show you guys an overlay of the map to give you guys a better idea of how you need to do and what's the route you need to take. Alright, so after you get done with that guys, you're going to have to come to this location right here which is going to be the St. Bridge. Now from the St. Bridge, you're going to travel all the way over here until you get to the Smoldering Church. Now within the Smoldering Church, you're then going to have to go to this location which is the Route New Balcony. And of course, you're going to be talking to some NPCs as you're working right here. Then progress all the way over here until you get to this location called the 4th and 4th. You're going to want to go in here and definitely pick up the uh, piece that you're going to need to open up the other area we're going to be heading to in just a tad bit, which is one of the medallions that you're going to need in order to activate it. 
And that's pretty much this map. Now from this particular map, we're then on to the next part. Let me overlay the map so you guys can see the idea of the route. And now on to the next section. All right, guys. So on from this next step, guys, you're going to want to make sure after you picked up the medallion, you're going to want to come back to this area right here. You can either fast travel to this Grace Point, which you already have. And you're going to go to the Sophia River Well. This is going to take you underneath an area, which I'll show you just in a tad bit. But you're going to want to go to this well. And after you complete that well, you're going to want to make sure you head on over to this other well. Okay, so I just want to make sure you guys get that in your head. It's two wells that we're going to be going to. This one right here and this location right here. But the main one we want to be talking about is this one right here, which we will be going underground. Once you guys go underground, you're going to be taken to the Sophia River Well Depths. From here, guys, you want to make sure you take the route of the red line, which is pretty much going through all this and then getting all the way to this particular endpoint. And that should pretty much complete the bottom portion of this map. Once you completed the bottom portion of the map, now it's on to the next location. I'm going to overlay the map so you guys can get a better idea of where we're at. All right, guys, so after you kill the wells, now it's time to come back up to Earth. And we're going to be heading to this location right here called, called the Impassable Great Bridge. When we get to the location in front of this Impassable Great Bridge, there's going to be this little thing right here, which is going to be a little gateway. You're going to want to make sure you go in through that little gateway, and that gateway is going to teleport you all the way right here. Once you're in here, guys, there's going to be an NPC. You're going to talk to that NPC and then progress your way to this area. Once again, another gateway, which will teleport you to this area. Now, once you get to this location, you're going to be fighting a boss. But once you kill this boss, guys, you got to make sure that you did the first steps we did earlier. Because if you didn't do those quest lines earlier, you might mess up the progression on those quest lines that we did earlier before getting to this part. So just double check that you guys did everything on the uh, quest lines that we talked about earlier. And then you guys kill this boss and then you guys are able to progress. Now let me go overlay the map so you guys can see exactly the route you need to take. So you guys can get the better idea of what it looks like. Alright, so after you're done with that boss fight, guys, now it's time to go to the wrong table, continue the dialogue, you know, complete the quest. You should theoretically still have some quests within your, you know, quest line that you need to complete. And that's what we're going to continue doing. Of course, if you're still doing the Randy quest line, you guys are still doing a good job because we're still continuing that. Now... What you want to do, guys, is you want to head to this location right here called the 4th Height West. Now, in this particular location, there's going to be some jumping platforms. And uh, you're going to need to use those jumping platforms to make sure you get to this uh, you know, underground location. This is going to be called the Crater Location. So once you get down to this particular area and get down to the craters, you're going to be taken to this part, which is the Sophia River Well Depths. So remember, we already visited this area. This is just a different section of this particular area and a different entry point. Now, once you're near this location, this is where you really need to pay close attention to because now we're really going to divide ourselves into, once again, red line, blue line. And it's going to be extremely important that you pay attention to how you want to do this. So, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to head right here. And actually, let me zoom in so you guys can get a better idea, a better view. So, you're going to go start off right and start off right here at this point. From this point, you're going to head on to this point right here, the Mimic Tier. Collect the Mimic Tier, which is a really good tier. Keep working your way down this down this bridge. Now you're gonna make go down this bridge, pick up this uh, waypoint, go here, and then do a little loop and go to the Night Sacred Grounds, and that's gonna be your red uh, your red continuation. Once you're done here, go ahead and jump back up here and head this way, and this time you're gonna work your way to this particular area, loop around here until you get to this part right here, which is gonna be where you're gonna meet another NPC, which is gonna be um, I don't want to spoil it, but he's a very important NPC. That's going to continue the Randy quest line, and that is where you meet him. So, very simple. Now, let me overlay the um, image of the map so you guys can get a better idea of how it's done and where you need to go. And then we're going to conclude and go on to the next part. All right, guys. So, after you completed this area, now it's time to fast travel to this area, the East Royal Luceria Gate. And we're going to work our way up this area and go here. Now, in this particular area, since we already theoretically should have the two medallions, if you guys have been following this guide, you're going to present these two medallions, and that's going to take you over here to the ground lift of Texas. Now, you want to explore this area as much as you can. There are, a, I believe, three to four NPCs in this area, which you're going to have to talk and dialogue with. It's very hard for me to pinpoint where these are at because I can't dive into the map any further than that. But you want to make sure you, uh, you, know, you do the dialogues and you find the NPCs here. It's going to take you like about a good 30 to 40 minutes just in this area alone to talk to all the NPCs to start their quest lines. After you get done in this particular area, now it's time to head to this other area right here, which is going to be the Veal Village. Now, this particular village, guys, is actually pretty interesting because this village 
has a couple of NPCs and one really important NPC is going to be located right here, which I don't want to spoil it, but her name starts with an M. Now, what you want to do here, guys, is you want to make sure you explore as much as you can. This is going to roughly take a good 20 to 30 minutes to explore as well. I, there's two NPCs here. After you get done exploring this area, you're going to want to head over to this part right here, which is the Ruinster uh, Precipice Overlook. And once you're in this area, this actually is going to lead you all the way to this pathway right here, all the way to Volcano Manor, which you can explore here. But one tip for this area, if you do explore here, there is going to be a boss fight. And the boss fight has two phases. Make sure you do not complete phase two. Once again, make sure you do not complete phase two. You can complete phase one, then back out, because there is a quest line here in Volcano Manor that you could pick up. If you kill the boss, you will automatically cancel that particular quest line. So explore the area, get all the quest lines here, but do not kill the boss. Just do phase one and just come back later after you complete the quest line to do phase two. But overall in general, that is the uh, areas you want to go. So come through here, go to this ground lift, go through here, explore all this area, and then you guys should be good to go. So I'm going to overlay the map and show you guys a quick example of what you need to do to order to get this done. These are only red lines, so it's actually pretty self-explanatory. Alright guys, so after you guys get done exploring this area right here and done the Volcano Manor, just get the boss to one phase. You're then going to have to finish completing the Rani's quest line. That's going to take you back to this location where we've been coming quite often actually right here so we can go underground. Once we're underground, we're going to traverse all this area, get to this part where her coffin's going to be. Go through the coffin to complete the Rani's quest line to make sure you guys do it in that sequential order. So make sure you guys do the first part that we talked about earlier and then do the Rani's quest line. Now, once you guys go through that coffin, guys, it's then going to teleport you to all the way over here, but underground. So this part right here, guys, and this is where things get a little bit tricky because you could probably get lost in this area. And I kind of want to give you a guide of how you're going to start and when you're going to end up. So basically, you guys are going to end up right here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you take this pathway all the way down across this area right here, all the way in here through these lakes, all the way here until you get to this location right here. And work your way down to this part and down here to this part right here. So it's actually a pretty long quest line uh, because you're going to have to do a lot of traversing. But overall, in general, that is how you want to complete it. Start from here and work your way all down here. I'm going to show you guys a quick line so you guys can see exactly how it goes. One of the trickiest parts is going through this river right here, guys. It is pretty crazy. I actually have a guide of this particular quest line. So if you guys want to see what that looks like better inside we have guides of all these quest lines. So as you guys are going to pick up the questions, if for some reason you happen to get lost, come to our channel and check out the quest, look for the quest line. And we have every single quest line so you guys give you a more in-depth guide of how to complete it. But let me overlay the map so you guys can see the road you need to take. And that's pretty much it. And now on to the next part of the map. All right, guys. So now that you guys are done with that, now it's time to go to the most confusing area part of the map, which is this one, guys. You will get lost in this area. Trust me. But this is the castle, so once you guys here, you guys are going to go to the capital rampart. There is a very pesky boss right here. But once you get done with him, you're going to go through here, make your way this area, and just loop all the way around here. Go. There is going to be a boss fight right here. Complete that boss fight, and that's going to let you progress to this area over here, guys. And from here, you're going to be able to go all the way out here, progress to this area, and then work your way up here. Of course, you will be talking to a couple NPCs on here, so just keep that in mind. But that's overall the area of the way you want to actually progress this particular side of the map. I'm going to overlay the image so you can see exactly what route to take. So remember, once again, guys, do the red line first and then do the blue line. All right, guys, so after you finish that part, now it's time to almost complete the game. You guys are almost there to the finish line, guys. We are good to go. Now it's going to be very interesting because really now you got to really pay attention to the map that I'm going to put on the screen where we have red line, green line, blue line. Because you're definitely going to want to know to go. So let me give you guys a quick overview. So you're going to follow, of course, like always, the first, follow the red line. So you're going to start right here on this lift, work your way all the way over here, go to this area, and then go into this castle, pick up a couple stuff, talk to a couple NPCs, and finish that quest line first. After you're done with that, guys, you're going to want to head back to the ground lift and actually take a different route, which is go this way, work your way up here, go to this part right here, where you're going to complete a quest line on this part right here, this area right there. And then from there, you're going to come back and finish this one right here, which is going to be right there. That's a green one. Now, after you're done with the green one and the red one, now it's time to complete the blue one. So you're going to want to fast travel to the freezing lakes, make your way around the freezing lakes, go all the way around here, and hit, and which will end up right here. And this is the time where you have to make a decision 
which we'll talk about after this part of the, uh, the video. You're going to have to decide which ending you want or when do you want to kill the fire giant. What I would recommend, guys, if you guys approach the fire giant, remember, it is a two-phase boss. Only do phase one. After phase one, you're going to be able to come back to another area. Don't do phase two because if you kill this boss, it will automatically delete all the quest line that you've done. So when you get to this point, you want to make sure you complete every single quest line to this point. Just double check that all the quest lines are completed. If you want a reference guide to all the quest lines, I have them all in my video on the channel. So you guys can reference if you guys completed them all or not. After that, it is time to make the decision and decide which ending you guys are going to have. And you're going to, I kind of don't really want to spoil it, but you are going to get to the point after you kill that boss where he's going to give you two options. Depending on the option you pick is going to be the outcome. I'm going to show you guys both options so you guys know where to go. But regardless, guys, this is the moment where you guys got to think and be like, okay, what option do I want? I'm going to pull the map right here so you guys can see the routes. Red line, green line, and blue line. Remember, red is first, green is second, blue is third. So keep that in mind and do it in that sequential order. After you guys are done with that, now it's not moving on to the next part. Now, depending what choice you guys made, it's going to take you to either of these two locations, to the Mogan's Palace, which is what you see right here, or it's going to take you to the Milikilis Hill Tree. Now, that's going to be dependent on which one you picked. Now, after you're done with that, guys, you're going to then take it to the Crumbling Far Room Asula. Now, remember, guys, in order for you guys to complete this one, you're going to have to go through a whole lot of enemies. But once you complete this, that is the final game, and you have completed the entire Elden Ring campaign. Now, remember, guys, if you guys are having trouble with any of these quest lines, we have all the quest lines here on the channel. And one of the best quest lines is this one that's popping up right now on the screen. Make sure you click on that if you haven't completed it so you guys can complete it and get one of the best gears currently found in the game. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.